Okay, so uh, we have seen in the first module the introduction to the statistical thermodynamics as a course in general and also we have outlined the postulates and then we have went on to obtain an expression for the probability distribution which is the Boltzmann distribution function and at the end we arrived at an expression for canonical partition function. In today's lecture or I would say today's new module what I will do I will go with the canonical partition function, I will discuss the function in detail and then we also will like to discuss what are the thermodynamic properties you can obtain from this function because you have now distributed or you have defined a function, now you want to go ahead and apply it. So today's lecture is based on the properties of the canonical partition function. So what we will discuss is we see first the properties in general of the canonical partition function. So we have still to come about the value of beta. So how does the value of beta is? So we did not get an expression relation between beta and temperature. We will find that. Then uh, we will discuss what are the thermodynamic quantities which we can obtain from the partition function. And then we will also define a canonical partition function for independent energy mode. So what does it mean? An independent energy mode implies that uh, you have various modes of energy. For example, if you have a atom, it may move, so it will have translation energy, it may rotate, it may have rotational energy, okay. Or it will also have a energy corresponding to its nuclear spin, so you have a nuclear part of energy. Then the electronic states, you have an electronic form of energy. So right now we will discuss how these invariant energy modes are related to each other with and how it affects the partition function. So for that first what we have to do is first we have to define what is the probability of occurrence of a particular microstate with the energy E alpha. Now in the previous class what we have seen we have obtained the probability. Now here what we do is we write out again the expression what is the probability of a microstate I in this case which has an energy E alpha. So that is nothing but the exponential part divided by the partition function. So if I want to write it in terms of mathematical expression, it will be pi alpha pi alpha e to the power of minus beta e alpha by the partition function. This partition function I will mention as q most of the places, but now since it is an introductory part. I will mention the expression as a whole. So it is nothing but the summation of all the energy states. So since it is alpha and I is for microstate, for a particular microstate, there may be many such microstates possible. So I am asking for a particular microstate, a particular arrangement of atoms which has energy E alpha. That is equal to the exponential term by the summation of the all the expression of the energy which is in its exponential term. So in this case, let us say I put another substrate J. So J is all the states, that is we can say all the states of the, so you have so many microstates, so you add up all those, then you divide with the numerator as e to the power of minus beta to power. So it means this is the probability of the particular microstate EI. So this you know it is nothing but in terms of partition function e to the power of minus beta e alpha by q. So this we said that q is the canonical partition function, it is defined using this. So this is the probability of a occurrence of a particular microstate. Now if I want to change the definition and I ask what is the probability of finding the system in any microstate, please pay attention here any microstate is written and here it is a particular microstate of any microstate such that its energy is e alpha. So these two have different meaning, one is we are interested in a particular microstates where the configuration of the atoms is fixed. Second one we are saying any of the microstates what is the probability but the only issue is their energy should be E alpha. So for that the concept of degeneracy comes. So then I will not write any I subscript here because we are not talking about microstate, I will only write without a subscript. So I will write here P probability of locating a microstate E alpha. So if I want to write down it is the probability, probability of 
finding the macro system macro system in any micro state in any micro state with the energy E alpha. Okay, this is the probability of finding the micro system in any micro state with the energy E alpha. So, this will be nothing but you sum them all the all the micro states probability. So, if suppose there are 10 micro states each having an energy of E alpha. So, what is the probability of occurring or of chance of observing one microstate. So, it is 1 by 5. So, 1 by 5. So, you add up all the probabilities. So, 1 by 5 plus 1 by 5 like that. So, in that case, these are the number of microstates having energy E alpha. So, this is actually E alpha, not sigma. That is E alpha. Okay. So, this is states I. If I want to write here, what are, what are I? States I whose energy is E alpha. state psi whose energy is E alpha. So, this is the overall probability. This is all the states which has probability are of uh, energy having E alpha. So, this I can write down as P i E alpha. I am sorry in the previous case also this is not should be not be sigma. If it is sigma it is it is should be E alpha. Okay. So, it will be P i E alpha the same thing as I have written for the probability of occurrence of a particular microstate. So, P i into I will write here number of states with energy E alpha. number of states with energy E alpha or it is P i of E alpha into the we call this the degeneracy. We write in this symbol, ohm symbol. So, you write E alpha. So, what are the number of states? This is the degeneracy multiplied by its individual probability. So, this is what we called as degeneracy. Okay. So, this is a number. So, number of states with having energy E alpha. So, if you have let us say 5 states having E alpha, so what you do is for a particular state probability you multiply into 5, you will get the probability of a locating of a energy of E alpha. So, this is how we write the definitions. One with a particular microstate, I subscript and one where you do not have any subscript, the so locate of any energy having E alpha. So, if you know these definitions correctly, then you will be able to understand. So, what we are going to observe or we, what we are going to derive. So, if I want to again recollect what is the probability of occurrence of a particular microstate I with energy E alpha. So, there are two ways of writing it. One is as I have already written the same definition which I will again write down. So, I will not discuss this in detail. P i E alpha, same thing which we discussed 1 minus beta of E alpha by. So, here what I will do is I will write here q. So, from now on we will always discuss the definition in terms of number of molecules fixed volume beta. Beta it, it will be finally having some value, but in this case it is beta. So, it is the partition function, you divide a partition function, you get the probability of occurrence of a particular microstate I with energy E alpha. Now, if I want to write in terms of energy levels, right now the previous slide also we talked about energy states. If I want to write in terms of energy levels, I can write like this. So, it will be P of E alpha equals to, so that was for a single atom. So, if I want for assembly of atoms, sometimes you can also write in terms of the degeneracy. So, this is again a number degeneracy for an energy E alpha into multiplied by its individual probability. 
same way we are writing the symbols are different. So, we know this definition P i e alpha from this expression. So, if I want to write down the entire expression, so I just replace P i alpha from the previous uh, definition e to the power of minus beta of e alpha by q, which q we know is a function of n v n beta. Okay. Now, what is this q? Just I want to mention what is q? q is can write either way, either you write in states, number of states i. So, you enumerate all the states e of beta e i or this can be also in terms of levels, energy levels. So, if I write j it means it is energy level. So, it will be omega e j into e to the power of minus beta of e j. Same definition, but different ways to write one in terms of states, one in terms of energy levels. So, these two definitions you need to remember. So, now if you see from the expression, we have an exponential term. So, it means the probability of occurrence of a particular microstate decreases with energy. Why is it so? Because you see, we have a term e to the power of minus beta and then an energy term. The probability is directly proportional to this term. So, it means it is a negative. So, the probability of occurrence of a particular, so a lower energy, so it means that particular state with a lower energy is more probable. So, lower the value of E, higher will be the value of probability. So, lower energy is more probable than a higher energy. Okay. So, it means you are more likely to observe a lower state of energy than a higher energy. It is true because most of the atoms or molecules whatever you see, they are at ground state and ground state is the lowest energy. So, probability of observing anything in the assembly of atoms, molecules in a ground state or a lower energy state, it is more probable which comes from this fact also from mathematical because it is an exponential term. But the issue is then there is another term omega. In the previous slide, omega is the degeneracy, but this degeneracy is the least in the lower energy state, the highest in the upper energy state. So, it is an increasing function of increasing function of energy level. So, it means as you go up and up, as you go to higher energy states, this number of degeneracy will increase. So, you have a function, overall function of a particular microscopic system is a product of energy or probability and degeneracy. So, one term is an exponential term which is decreasing with increasing energy and a degeneracy term that is increasing with increasing energy. Okay. So, it means if I want to draw a probability diagram, let us say I draw a probability diagram with the number of states. Let us say this is P i. Let us not put any uh, numbers to this axis. Let us say we number of states. So, it means the probability, so if I want to write in terms of words what I am drawing, this is nothing but I am plotting the probability, probability of occurrence, probability of occurrence of a particular state with energy of a particular state. with energy E i. So, I will define 0 here. So, 0 means the lowest energy state and as you go towards the right hand side, the energy increases. So, lowest energy states and probability as you saw this is exponentially decreasing. So, you will get a plot something like this, like this. So, with higher and higher energy states, probability of locating such an energy state is very low. Then I can have another plot where I plot the, where I plot let us say the omega i, what is the degeneracy for each individual state. So, this i and this i actually corresponds to each other. So, at every point, what is the degeneracy? So, if you see this will go like this. Because as I told you at ground state the degeneracy is the least. As you go with higher and higher energy state number of energy level or number of sorry number of degeneracies increases. So, it means degeneracy of states. 
this is what y axis it is the degeneracy of states with energy ei now just do a product of these two if i do a product of these two in the axis and plot them with the same i number of energy states so this will be omega i into p i what will you get so you will get something like this so it means when you do a product of these two so it will be somewhere in between a hump will be there somewhere in between but more towards the lower energy state more towards the lower energy state so that's what it says if i want to write this diagram i can write here probability of occurrence of a particular microstate with energy ei so you should understand this plots very carefully one is you talk about absolute probability which is least as you go up another is degeneracy which is least as you go down and then a product of these two which is somewhere that is shifted towards the lower energy state so that is what all about the canonical partition function how the probabilities and the degeneracies depend on each other now we go to how we can derive the thermodynamic properties so first is we discuss the internal energy what is the internal energy internal energy is the average value of the energy of the system we can denote it in this manner e bar so what is this e bar so i can write down what is this you know this is u and uh, if i want to write down all the states k so if i have in a particular data all the states with me so you take all the states and multiply by their probability so particular state let's say the energy is ek and what is the probability of observing a state ek it is p of ek so this is what the definition suggests it's the average value of the energy of the system the average value is this u okay so this is where the probability comes into the picture so these are data k point k number of energy values of a system you have tabulated so and your product is with the probability of their individual ek so this is nothing but again you replace probability with this exponential part and the summation part so it will be summation ek e to the power of minus beta ek this is ek by q so what is it what we have done we have done nothing we have replaced the probability expression by e to the power of summation of e to the power of minus beta ek by q so ek then i can put it inside i can put it inside the summation because it has to be product so that's why it is inside and this will obviously go towards all the energy states this is the expression for the internal energy so you can write here where q is equal to summation of e to the power of minus beta ek all the states so it will sum over all the states available so if you have data with you where you have the energy states available e1 e2 e3 e4 it will run over all the energy states with the product into their probability respective probability so it means that uh, if i want to do a derivative of this term let's say of the canonical partition function i want to do a partial derivative do q by do beta with respect to beta and i assume beta obviously is unknown but if i want to do this this expression so what it will be so this you have beta outside and ek ek is the constant so it will come out so it will have minus of ek come out from the exponential term across all the states k 
okay. So minus beta comes because uh, this E k is a constant because we have made n and v number of molecules and volume to be constant. So you cannot change the energy if you make this as constant. So it means it is a constant with respect to beta. So if you do a derivative you get this. So now u then I can write down as E bar. This is what we have written. The u internal energy is the average value of the energy system denoted by E bar. So E bar. So then it becomes this E bar then I can write in this manner also it will be simply be equal to minus of do ln q by do beta because our E bar is this value. This value we have E bar, E bar is equal to u so this which is equal to this value and this value is equal to the exponential term summation by q and uh, we have written uh, this term E k e to the power of minus this particular term is equal to do q by do beta okay so this i have replaced by do q by do beta and you have a q already down in the denominator since it is already down so i can write this do q since you have a q in the de denominator it becomes logarithmic d ln q by do beta so this takes the form E k all the states q by q okay. So from this expressions if I want to write this as equation 1. So from equation 1 I did a derivative I got an expression minus of summation E k e to the power of minus beta E k. So this expression I actually substitute in this part the definition so that I can replace u with e bar and write in terms of logarithmic derivative so do of ln q by do beta so this is the expression for internal energy okay so this was the simplest example we took one is the internal energy we will see more properties later on but before we go into more properties of canonical partition function we need to know some of the other aspect also. So whenever we talk about a canonical partition function here, we talk about some energy modes. What are the energy modes? You know they are the degrees of freedom. So it may have kinetic energy, potential energy, all those things. In this case, instead of potential energy, what we do, we write it may have the translational mode, the rotational mode, then uh, vibrational mode, nuclear mode, electronic mode. So all these will come up because the vibrational mode and uh, it usually comes the vibrational mode will usually come when there is a bond so if i if, if suppose we don't talk about bonds we talk about only a single atom and we concentrate only on some energy modes let's say i consider uh, two different energy modes for a particular atom the translational mode and the rotational mode translational mode is as you know it is a function of mass and center of mass velocity. So if you know the mass and if you know the center of mass velocity you know the translational mode and what is the energy contribution. Same manner you can also compute the rotational mode. Rotational mode as you know it will depend upon the moment of inertia and the rotational velocity. Now we are going to see what is the value of the partition function when you have two independent energy mode. When I talk of independent energy modes means the translational energy mode does not vary or does not affect the rotational energy mode and vice versa the rotational energy mode does not affect the translational energy mode. So let us see what to write in the partition function. So in this case let us suppose in the translational mode you have E translational 1. So we write the possible translational mode values or states give me 1 e translational 2 or e translational 3. So I am giving possible energy states. So in terms of transfer energy states let us suppose the particular atom has access to these three energy states. And let us suppose we assign another three energy states with respect to rotational mode. What are those? Let me number them. 
rotational 1 e rotational 2 e rotational 3 so it means it has access to three energy stored states of translational mode and three energy states of rotational mode so obviously it will pick only one of them from each energy mode so if it picks translational mode 1 it can pick either rotational 1 rotational 2 rotational 3 likewise if it picks 2 it will pick either 1 2 or 3 likewise 3 it will pick either 1 2 and 3 so let us write the possible ways of distribution of this energy modes that is rotational and translational mode for a energy of a single atom so if suppose it has taken up translational 1 and rotational 1 so it has an energy of these two values so we write a partition function based on the exponential part of translational 1 rotational 1 likewise translational 1 and rotational 1 or rotational 2 rotational 3 we write out the expression so as I told you what is the partition function it is the summation of all the exponential terms to their power of their total energy so if I want to write down so what are the possible energy energy trans 1 plus e rotational 1 this is one state okay this is one state then you have let us say e trans 1 plus e rotational 2 this is the other state of that isolated atom then you can have let us say trans e trans 1 plus e rotational 3 this is the other state so 3 state so 1 2 3 so you have 3 already likewise how many possible combination are possible so if you see number of possible combination will be if you notice carefully it will be close to 1 2 3 4 5 6 8 close to 8 okay because you see the different combination if you write rotational 1 and translational 1 is the same thing or rotational 2 plus translational 1 is the same thing so there will be some repetition so likewise if i want to write the other states then e translational 1 plus so translational 1 is over so what we do is translational 2 plus e translational 2 plus rotational 2 2 is another state then we have e translational 1 e rotational 3 this is the other state okay then translational 3 plus rotation 1 translational 3 plus rotational 1 this is another state okay trans 3 plus rotational 2 is the other state and there may be many is other states also so you can enumerate them so based on you take all the combinations possible so these are the different states where the atom have access to so it can either go into this state or this state or these states this state this state this state likewise so if it have access to these many states we know how to write a canonical partition function what we have to do we have to write the exponential term of e of, of these energy states and then add them up so the what is the expression for this so if i want to write for the single atom so q this is q is for single atom capital q is for assembly of atoms so here we are considering single atom i write a small q here so it means e to the power of minus beta then we are write e trans 1 plus e rotational 1 okay this is one term for this state for this state again e to the power of minus beta then we write down e trans 1 plus e rotational 1 rotational 2 and then uh, likewise I, I will write all this so you can now write it down so this is what it means the canonical partition function it is the summation across all energy states so these are the energy states 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 whatever so keep on writing this okay you keep on writing this 
then what you do, you rearrange the terms. So how do you rearrange the terms? What you do is you collect the translational terms here in this manner, Q. So what I do is here, e to the power of minus beta. So this term, I open the brackets into, just open the brackets. Okay. Just open the brackets first, then plus keep on doing this. Okay, you open the brackets. Then what we do from that expression, what you do is you take Q here and take e to the power of minus beta into translational mode 1 as common. So if you take that as common, you will see you will have these terms in between e to the power of minus beta e of rotational 1 plus e to the power of minus beta e of rotational 2 plus e to the power of minus beta e of rotational 3. You will get this. Okay. Then again do the same thing e to the power of meta eta of trans 2 you will get the same value e to the power of minus beta e rotational 1 plus e to the power of minus beta e rotational 2 plus e to the power of minus beta e rotational 3. Now again the same thing you will get from e to the power of minus beta e of 3. So again if you take common you will get the same, I should not, anyway I can write it down for your convenience, e to the power of minus beta rotational 2. Okay, So you rearrange the entire expression such that this translational 1, translational 2, translational 3 is taken out as common. So now what is this expression? This expression is nothing but if I want to write it down, it is just the product of 3 terms. Okay, So it means it is nothing but e to the 1 of minus beta e trans 1 plus e to the power of minus beta e trans 2 plus e to the power of minus beta e trans 3 into e to the power of minus beta e rotational 1 is it? It is the product of these two terms, this 3 term 1 bracket in another 3 term 2 bracket. So what is this and what is this? So if you notice carefully, we are adding the exponential terms of translational energy modes. So can I write like this, Eq of translational into, what is this? It is again the partition function of only the rotational energy term. So it is Q rotational, isn't it? So this term is translational and this term is rotational. So it means total Q is nothing but the product of translational into product of rotational energy mode. So it means if you have some other energy modes which are independent in nature, you just it will be a product of all the energy modes, translational and rotational, in electronic and vibrational and nuclear like this way. So here we have considered two energy modes, translational and rotational. So it means we have now come to this conclusion that canonical partition function is the product of the partition function of the individual energy mode. So if there are number of energy modes, it is simply let us say energy modes if it is A, B, C, D like that, A may be translational, B may be rotational, C may be electronic, D may be nuclear. So it is just the product of all these QA to QB to QC. This is an important outcome for the canonical partition function. Okay. So now we have seen independent energy mode. Now let us look up what is the canonical partition function for a collection of 
non interacting identical atoms now in, in the initial part we took up only one atom now we have number of atoms but we assume they are not interacting with each other so let us see n such identical atoms which are sufficiently far apart so it means the atoms are not interacting with each other they are far apart we also neglect their potential energy of interaction and assume they only have one translational energy so it means from the previous case we had two energy modes now consider one energy mode it is translational so if i want to write down it means uh, let's uh, suppose it has these many accessible states as e1 e2 e3 e4 so i just write down e to the power of minus beta e1 plus e to the power of minus beta e2 plus e to the power of minus beta e3 likewise so if e1 e2 e3 e4 like that are the accessible states so the quotation function for a single atom is this now can we specify the energy state of each atom can we specify what is the energy state of each atom we cannot do that because it is provided by the heisenberg's uncertainty principle which says that the position and velocity of each atom at an instant are imperfectly defined so then can we specifying the energy state of each atom so how do we specify instead of specifying the energy state of each atom we define a state of the system by specifying the number of atoms in each energy state but not indicating which atoms are in that state so you have collection atoms it is not possible to say which atom is in which state but we can always state how many atoms are in each each state so it means that indistinguishability is lost so now we talk about this number nij or this part i can also write in this manner n i j i think this will be much more apt it says it is a number of atoms in the jth atomic state of a single atom in the ith microscopic state so let's say you have a collection of atoms let's say uh, this is i and in this arrangement is something like this 1 2 3 4 5 6 the atoms in another state another this is i state let us suppose another i state you have let's say in this manner the energy atoms 1 3 2 4 5 6 6 is another assembly of states so this i is you have the macroscopic state this is a macroscopic state where all the atoms are present now in this atoms are placed but in this it is showing that one atom is in the first atomic state two atoms in the second atomic state three atoms in the third atomic state like that so this index is j and this different arrangements are in i so i is macroscopic state j is the single energy atomic state so this is the first atomic energy state where one atom is there two atoms are there three atoms four atoms like that in this case three atoms are there in the second energy state like that if this is true so it means i can define it in this manner n i ai this is the manner so it means this one this if i make a asterisk it corresponds to this so 1 2 3 4 it will tell you the first state second state third state in this first state one atom is there second state two atoms three state three atoms the numbers can be anything i just wrote for your convenience so it means this then also becomes true so if i add them up so if i make a summation across all the states of a single atom this then will become n capital n which is the number of atoms in the system okay what is the total number of atoms in the system so you add up all those which are here so we'll get the total number of atoms in the system and by definition this is also true so ei total energy if i know this it will be nothing but you make a summation you do a product of nj 
into i all the states j of a single atom okay so it means corresponding with this corresponding you will have e1 this is e2 this is e3 like that so you make a product of these two one molecule in the first energy state having energy e1 so multiply one into e1 two molecules or two atoms in the second atomic state having energy e2 so two into e2 like that you do a summation if you sum them all up you will get the energy of the macroscopic state i that's what it means okay so moving ahead so now we see what is the partition function for a collection of non interacting identical atoms so what does it mean let's say i have two atoms the atomic assembly of atoms means i have two atoms in this case so if there is two atoms in this case and let us suppose i make this as the molecular energy states that so what is this this is let's say i let's say i is 1 let's say another i make i just fill up this i equals to 2 likewise or maybe just i will put another one so that it will be clear to you So, i equal to 1, i equal to 2, i equal to 3, this is the arrangement of the assembly of atoms. So, these are macroscopic state 1, state 2, state 3. Now, let us suppose you have only 2 atoms. Let us see example where you have assembly of only 2 atoms. So, how can they be placed? So, first way it can be placed is both the atoms goes here, then everything is 0 both the atoms goes into the first atomic molecular energy state. Second maybe one of them goes here, other one goes here, remaining is all 0. Third maybe one of them stays as before in the first molecular energy state, but there is nothing in the second, it goes in the, the remaining one goes in the third energy state. So like that you may have several such options available. So let us say another if I want to draw like this, uh, you may have another energy state like this. Let us say this is i equal to 4, okay. So i equal to 4. We have in this case again it is let us say this is 1, this is again it does not go into the second energy state, it does not go into the third energy state, it goes into the fourth energy state. Okay, like that it can go into the 5th, 6th, so while it goes into 5th, 6th, this i is also changing. So these are the all possible macro energy states or the macroscopic states and these are the number of atoms in each molecular energy states. This is a single energy molecular energy states. So it means there are two atoms in this particular state, 0 in this second one, third one, fourth one like this. So, up till now you must be getting to know that both the atoms in one of the energy states to get filled up is very rare. I mean you do not see because the amount of energy states available for the incoming atoms are pretty pretty high as compared to the number of atoms. So, this particular macro states is more like more unlikely as compared to the energy other energy states. So let us now write the partition functions for the individual states. So for example, this is one state i equal to 1, i equal to 2, second state, the third state, the fourth state. So let us write the single particle or in this case it is not a single particle but it is an assembly of non-identical atoms. So let us write it down. So for the first, so I will write here capital Q instead of capital or small q because capital Q, why? Because it is a two atoms. So, for this first state, it has two of the atoms in the same energy state. So, its value will be e to the power of the Boltzmann constant into two times of the energy. That is energy, let us suppose if this is E1, this is E2, this is E3, E4 like that. So, E1 is the energy of the first 
molecular state, energy state, then E2 is second, then E3 third like that. So, let us write in terms of energy states. So, if you write down, we will get E to the power of minus 2 into beta into E1. So, because it is minus beta into E1 plus E1 because there are 2 atoms. So, 2 times eta 1 is equal to 2 eta 2 is minus 2 beta eta 1. Now, in this case what will be? We write the exponential part. So, what is the exponential part? Again what you do? You write e to the power of minus beta then see the first atom is in the first molecular energy state and second atom is second molecular energy state. So, you have to add these molecular levels. So, adding these two you get this. Okay. Likewise, you keep on adding the second one the third microstate it will be e to the power of minus beta E1 you do not have anything in the second molecular energy state you have in the third so E3. Then again in the fourth microstate you write down the exponential term E1 plus you have nothing in the second and third molecular energy state you have the atom in the fourth one. So, you write the corresponding energy like this you keep on writing these terms. So, I have written here capital Q signifying it is a assembly of atoms. Now, what do you do after this? Let us write if had it been a single atom instead of an assembly of atoms, had it been a single atom, what would be the different atomic states? So, if that would be the say, so we can write it Q instead of 2 0 0 0, if it is a single atom, it can be either 1 0 0 0 or it can be 0 1 0 0 or it can be 0 0 1 likewise. So, for a single atom having access to these energy states, what are the different combination? If I write it down, it will be simply be equal to the sum of the exponential term which is quite, which I will not repeat here. You just keep on adding their respective energies. Okay. So, this is for a single energy atom. Now square, now square it, square both the sides. If I make a square of it, so it will become e to the power of minus beta e1 plus e to the power of minus beta e2 plus whole square. So, if I open this up, so what you have is and look up this expression for capital Q. Let us suppose capital Q expression is 1 and 1 which is here is equation number 2. So, try to see both these expressions. So, if you see, if you see both these expression, if you leave out this term, if you leave out the first term e to the power of minus 2 beta e 1, then this entire term is nothing but the square of q. Okay. If you see entire term is nothing but the square of the q, only thing is, but the issue is the indistinguishability of the atoms because we do not know which atom is in which energy states. So, when I write here 2 0 0 0 or 1 1, so whether the first one is in the first state or second one in the first state, we do not know that. So, due to this indistinguishability criteria, we actually can write from this equation 1 and 2. So, from equation 1 and 2 to take care of the indistinguishability term, we write here as a equation q is equal to half of q square. Now, this too comes due to the fact that both the atoms are not distinguishable, it is indistinguishable that is why this too comes. So, this q square arrives at this point. So, it means that if I have two atoms, you take the square of that divide by 2, you get the partition function of the assembly of atoms here in this case n is equal to 2. What happens if n equal to 3? you will just have q to the power of 3 by 3 factorial. When it is a 4 atoms, it will be q to the power of 4 by 4 factorial. Likewise, so n atoms means you will have the small q to raise to the power of n, capital N will number of atoms, then in the denominator you will have n factorial. So, it means if I have a system which has n 1 number of atoms of a particular type, n 2 atoms of other type like this all constraint within a volume V and having a constant thermal reservoir coefficient beta, then the overall partition functions then becomes this, the product of their
okay. So, it means n 1 takes the form q 1 to the power of n 1 by n 1 factorial into then n 2 q 2 to the power of n 2 by n 2 factorial likewise. So, then you multiply them with their individual products and if you have a same type of system then when there is no difference in the mixture all atoms are similar then this q will be taking the form q to the power of n by n factorial. So, if you see this particular expression is similar to expression 3 and expression 4 are similar while expression 5 is for different species in a mixture. Okay. So, for expression 3 it is of 2 atoms that is the assembly of 2 non interacting atoms. If you take the expression 4 it is the assembly of n non identical atoms, but if you can distinguish the atoms. Okay. If you can distinguish the atoms n 1, n 2, n 3, so you can just have the product of their individual partition function to get the overall partition function of the entire system. So, this comes up to be the exact expression for the assembly of non interacting atoms. In this case, we have taken a monoatomic gas, then slowly we will extend it to some diatomic or polyatomic atoms. So, monoatomic gas we have assumed that there is no interaction between the atoms. So, let us summarize what we have read so far in this lecture. First is energy modes are independent, but distinguishable. If energy modes are independent, but distinguishable, let us say I can distinguish between a translational mode and a rotational mode. Translational mode you can always distinguish because it will have some velocity and mass, while rotational mode it will have a moment of inertia and a rotational velocity that can be distinguished. So, in that cases you can write out the partition function of the individual interacting energy mode and then do a product of that. So, it is a difference is well behaved between a rotational motion and translational motion. The total partition function is then the product of the partition functions of each of the energy modes. You may have some other energy modes also. Let us say you have nuclear or vibrational if it is a bond. So, you multiply them with their individual partition function. Now, another case we have studied here is when individual atoms are independent, but indistinguishable. The atoms are independent, they can move around freely, but they are also indistinguishable. In that case, the total partition function is a product of the individual atom partition functions. It is divided by the factorial n factorial as a result of the indistinguishability of the atoms. So, it means you have this particular expression which I just now wrote n 1, n 2 all constraint within a volume V and thermal reservoir beta. So, it will be the product of all the part different species multiplied with their individual number of atoms n i by n i factorial. This is what our message for a non interacting mixture, non interacting mixture, okay. non interacting mixture. So, thus we conclude this today's lecture. So, as before this entire derivation is available in the book of Sandler, please go through the division and the derivation in details. Thank you. Mm -hmm.